Well, we made it. Hallelujah. Um, this morning I got a message uh, called The Light of Christmas. You know, there's so many things that are bidding for to be the light of Christmas. You know, that so many commercials about things that you need to get in order to have a happy Christmas. You know, drink Coke, that's going to give you a Merry Christmas and all these other things going on, you know. But I don't think people really understand the impact that Christmas had on the world. The, the impact that Christ coming into the earth, uh, being born uh, in the flesh, I, I don't think they understand the impact of what that happened, what, what happened uh, to mankind on that day and to the world. It was a, it was a fulfillment of God's eternal plan it's not a just it's not just a, a nice Christmas story that we that we talk about you know and and uh, we sing some some Christmas hymns and and give gifts out and and attend Black Friday sales now it's Black Thursday they moved it uh, to Thursday so they they don't miss out on any of the the money and anything and there's nothing wrong with that but I don't think we really get the true impact of what happened on Christmas when Christ was born. And I think the devil hates Christmas. He, he hates it. So that's why he had to summons all of his demons to figure out something that will distract mankind from really realizing what happened. I think that Christmas song, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let the earth receive her king. I mean, that, that's not a song that, joy to the world. I mean, it's, hallelujah, joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king. And I think Christians ought to be the most excited about Christmas than anybody else on this earth. Because we understand what happened. It, it's a fulfillment of God's plan for mankind from all eternity. From, from, from the Genesis to, to, to the time that John said that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the glory of the only begotten Son. Isaiah, 700 years before he came, said that uh, a child would be born and he would be, uh, a virgin will conceive and, and bear a child that his name shall be called Emmanuel and, uh, and he will be the Prince of Peace. And 700 years and, and all throughout, even, even the book of Job says that I know my Redeemer liveth and God will send a Redeemer. So even in, in uh, Genesis when, when, uh, when man fell, God said that he was going to raise up one that's going to bruise the head of the serpent. So Christ has been prophesied about for thousands of years and when he was... The, this his his incarnation as, as being born of, of of the flesh. John said the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so, I have always been a purist on Christmas. I've always made sure that our ministries focused on the main thing. I, I sent a text out to every minister head this this a couple weeks, uh, two or three weeks ago, and said make sure that Jesus is the main reason that we celebrate Christmas because there's so many other things that are bidding for the to be the light of Christmas I mean, know what I'm talking about I mean you could go out today and you'll hear thousands of, I how many get so I get so many emails I, I probably 20 or 30 a day on junk people are trying to sell me because the holidays are coming up I told my wife I'll be glad when this is over <laughs> for that fact. But Jesus is the true light of Christmas. And like I said, there's many things that, that's wanting to be the light of Christmas. Light was the very first thing that God created. Uh, some of the first words recorded in the Bible says, let there be light. And in the Old Testament, light is often used as a symbol of goodness, uprightness, and blessings. It is linked closely with God 
and with goodness and uh, serves as a symbol of God's blessings. In the New Testament, light is used to point toward Jesus. Jesus is referred to as the light of the world in, in John 8.12. And in uh, 9.5, the Bible also tells us that anyone who follows after Jesus will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I like that, the light of life. Light is also used to characterize the whole life of the Christian. We're called to walk in the light as he is in the light. We are to be the children of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. See, the world was full of darkness, but Jesus is the light of life. He's the light of the world. And uh, if we're going to see the need for the light today. You know, there's many that say we don't need Christianity today. It's, a, it's an outdated religion. But there's still the biggest need for mankind today is the light of Christmas. Is Jesus Christ. So, uh, light is to be characterized in, in the Christian's life or to walk in the light. We're also children of God. Uh, the Bible says, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. You know that you're a light in the world? When you first got saved, man, you know, you invited Jesus into your life and your spirit wasn't alive unto God and the Holy Spirit came into you and <clears throat> you became a light. How many have ever seen those searchlights? If they put them on a, a stand, maybe in Halloween or something, they got them beaming all over the place so you could see where they're at. But, well, you're the light. God has put His light in you. And the world is full of darkness. And believe it or not, when you walk around, you're just going... And people are, whoa, what's up with you, man? We're also commanded to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, Romans 13, 12, and to walk as children of light. The whole reason for so much emphasis on light is simply due to the fact that we are continually waging battle with the forces of darkness. How many know that? The only way we can win the victory over darkness is through the light that is received from Jesus Christ. Through both the Testaments, light not only signifies, but testifies to the Almighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Light came into the world not only through the creation of a literal Son, but also through God's Son, Jesus Christ. You know, the first light was the natural light. God said, let there be light. And, and that was the very building block, the first thing that he created because it was the very building block for life. And the second light came into the world, which is Christ. And he's, he's the spiritual light that causes people to grow spiritually and to come out of darkness. And it exposes darkness. We're going to see that. Uh, later on. So light came into the world not only through the creation of the literal son but also through God's son Jesus Christ. This is why Christmas is so special not only to Christians but to the lost and dying because with Jesus light came into the world to bring everyone deliverance and reconciliation from darkness. How many used to live in darkness? Aren't you glad that you were able to come out of darkness into the light? The Bible says he's brought us out of darkness into a marvelous light. Isn't that awesome? Did you know, we're going to look at um, the light this morning, and I'm going to use an acoustic for light. L-I-G-H-T. 
The L will stand for um, Light Gives Life. The I is for Inspired. The G is for Guide. H is for Hope. And the T is for Truth. And so we're going to look at that. But uh, there's a need for light. Did you know that there is a disorder? There's all kinds of disorders out there today. But I'm going to give you another one. Uh, did you know that there's a physical disorder caused uh, by the lack of light? It's called seasonal affective disorder. S-A-D. <laughs> S-A-D. It causes by the lack of exposure to sunlight, which, is, which in turn alters a person's brain chemistry. During the fall and the winter months, uh, when the hours of daylight are shortened, less light passes through the eyes, which then inhabits the release of an important brain chemical called serotonin. When serotonin is not released in sufficient quantities, symptoms of depression may occur. Uh, uh, another important brain chemical, which is melatonin, uh, which regulates our sleep cycles, is released in greater quantities, adding to a uh, depressive state. How is seasonal affective disorder treated? Uh, the standard treatment for this disorder is light therapy. So if you are SAD, <laughs> if you are sad <laughs> this morning, the, the treatment for sad is light therapy. I'm getting ready to preach here now. <laughs> the treatment for sad is light therapy. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, uh, I watch these uh, shows on the History Channel uh, about Alaska, you know, it, I think it's awesome. But don't they have seasons there where it's just dark for, for how long? 40 days? How long? Anybody know? A couple months, I think, or a month or so. But that Alaska has the highest rate of suicide. And I think it's because of, you know, this, this period of darkness. Uh, and it causes a depressed state. They, people get sad. And uh, so the treatment for sad is, is, all, is just simply light therapy. Um, the advantage of light therapy are, are simple to administer, requires no medication and minimal side effects. Isn't that good? That you can get some therapy that doesn't cause side effects. It only affects a few few of us, one in five. But we need physical light, but even more, we need God's light. So if you are sad this morning, you need light therapy. And I'm going to tell you how to get that this morning. You never thought of the church as being a tanning booth, did you? <laughs> but this is a spiritual tanning booth. Hallelujah. And I want to share some of the functions of light this morning. And this will help us to understand God's unique place in our lives. Uh, and I told you I'm going to use this simple acoustic about light itself. But let's look at the first one. Light gives life. One of the first things God placed in this world was light. And I believe that that's the, the very building, the very foundation uh, for life is light. And light is a basic building block for plants. Uh, plants convert light into energy and as a building block for growth, uh, the process is called photosynthesis. Yeah. But that's plants soak up the sun. They just love to be out there and just, ah, yeah. They just soak up the rays and they grow. They don't ask much. They just want a little water and just be out there in the sun. And they just grow. They just, the, the sun has just, it, it, it converts it, energy to them and it causes them to grow. And so it is with SON light, sunlight. As we soak up the light of Jesus, the more sunlight we receive converts to spiritual energy. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says that in the beginning was the Word of God, and the Word was with God, and in the beginning was God. And all things were made through Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. And in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined into darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light of men. The life was the light of men. And in the light of the world, just as God said, let there be light, and created the sun, at Jesus' birth, light came into the world. And that's the second light. The light that, that causes men to come out of darkness. And I think light, uh, sunlight, that, that Christians need sunlight, S-O-N light. And that sunlight causes us to grow. It, it causes us to, to want more of God. I mean, when you feel God's presence in, in worship or when you're studying the Bible and, and you're, you're in the presence of God, you're, you're soaking up that sunlight. How many have ever, you, you through the week, you've just, you know, you just feel kind of battled and, and beaten and you've been wrestling with things all week and you come into church and, and, and there's songs that are being sung and, and, you, and, you, and the Holy Spirit's ministering to you and you raise your hands and you start singing and the presence of God comes upon you and, and, and all of a sudden you, you just feel better and you get excited about, uh, about Christ and it's because you're soaking up the presence of God the very light of God is, is coming into your spirit and it, uh, causing you to, to respond to the Holy Spirit so we need to uh, Christians just need to, to bask in the sunlight of God because it brings spiritual life to us If you were to just stay in darkness, you know, for months at a time and not have, you know, been in God's presence, you know, you're, you're not going to grow. You're, you're going to feel weak. You're going to feel, uh, you know, not strong in God's spirit. That's why the Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together, even much more so as you see the day approaching. Because when we're together... The Bible says when two or more are gathered that Christ is in the midst. And whenever Jesus is in the midst of, of his people, things happen. People get touched. Uh, God sets people free. They get, they get ministered to. They get delivered. and it, Just simply because of the presence of God. In John 1, 5 through 7, it says, This then is the message which we have heard in him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness. Think about that. God is light, and in him is no darkness. We come from darkness to light, but God is light. He's never been in darkness. And God is light. And so, the Bible says, If we have fellowship with him, if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie. You, you, can't, you can't walk in darkness and, and living after the flesh and say that you have fellowship with God because sin breaks your fellowship with God. But it goes on to say, if we walk in the light as He is in the light, what happens? We have fellowship with one another and with God. So, and then what happens? Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So we have to stay in the light of God. We have to continue soak up the rays of God. And that's simply by staying in His presence. And, uh, you know, listening to good music that's going to cause you to get edified and built up that's soaking in the sun rays 
You know, listening things that's going to build you up and edify you. Studying God's Word, being in Bible study, you know, being in church, fellowshipping with Christians. That's all soaking up God's rays. Hallelujah. And that's going to cause you to grow because you're, you're receiving the sunlight of God. Jesus is the light of the world. And I like that song that we sang, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above the deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet <clears throat> in the darkest streets shineth the everlasting light. The hope and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. And you know the man that wrote that song was a preacher back during the Civil War. And it was said that most of his, 75% of his congregation wore black because of they've lost either their sons or their husbands in the war. And this man wrote that song in the midst of all that darkness. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Yet in the dark street shineth the everlasting light. Isn't that good? In, in, in all this garbage that's going on in the world, sometimes I just get so frustrated with Every time, you know, I don't want to turn on the news sometimes because I'm going to hear another stupid thing somebody did in, the, in Washington. <laughs> and, I, and I just have to go, blah, blah, blah. you know. These guys are crazy and they're running our country. In, in, in the midst of all this darkness and all this garbage that's going on around us, the light still shines in the midst of darkness. And God is light. And you are the light of the world. So light brings life. It brings life. And when you share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the light of the world to somebody, you're, you're giving them a light. You're... you're, you're tossing them the light of the world. You're bringing life to them. And, and the minute they accept Jesus Christ, they, they become alive. The Bible says if that same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in you, it shall also quicken or make alive your mortal body. And so, the minute they receive Christ, they become alive unto God. It's because you have shared the light of the world to them. And you have given them spiritual life. Let's go to the second one. Light inspires. Praise God. Have you ever went outside after a cloudy and rainy day? You know, it's been raining for a few days. And you walk outside and it's just sunny and warm. And you just, ah, you just soak up, soak up the sun. And then you get inspired. You know what? I think I'm going to go ride my motorcycle. <laughs> or I'm going to go fishing. I mean, light causes you, you know, the warmth of the sun, and it, it causes you to, to be inspired to do something. You get excited. I love being outside during the summer. But yesterday I stayed in. This is the first time I've stayed indoors for the whole day. I don't think I could remember when I've done that. But sunlight inspires. And uh, it's also the sunlight of God inspires us. You can't be in the very presence of God and not get motivated to serve, to preach, or to witness. You, you can't, that can't happen. Whenever you're in the presence of God and in the light of God, you get inspired to do something. You get inspired to, to witness or you get inspired to, to you know, share the gospel with somebody. It, it just... It just motivates you when you're in the light of God. 
And you know, the other day I had probably felt the greatest presence of God the other day when something happened to me. And this has been a dream of mine for, for 10 years. I've been always wanting to see a pregnancy resource center in St. Genevieve. Well, we have one now. We have a, we have a center. The best is yet to come. We have a center. We have a director. We have an ultrasound machine. We've got a building that's fixed up top of the line. But the other day, I went in there and Lauren said, somebody called from uh, Collinsville. They Googled us. See, we run by the, the name Operations uh, Options for Women uh, on, on the website and, and on, uh, on also our phone and everything because Options for Women sounds like an abortion clinic. So they're going to call us when they want an abortion. And on our fundraising side, we call it St. Genevieve Area for Life. Well, somebody from Collinsville called the other day, Options for Women. They just Googled us and they called and they got a hold of Lauren. And they wanted abortion. This man was calling for his wife who was 10 weeks pregnant. He wanted to have her to have an abortion. So Lauren had talked to him and uh, had uh, also somebody from Rolla talk to him. And I said, you know, yesterday, I, or right after that, when I walked in there, I said, I need to call him and follow up on this and uh, see what, what's going on. So I called him and I said, you know, this is Joe from Options for Women. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to encourage you and, and see how we could help you. And if there was, you know, the, you, know you have a, a nine-year-old son and, you know, how would, you would hate to see, uh, you know, all the memories lost for that son if you would have aborted him and and then he, you know we talked for a little while and then he said we have decided to keep the baby <laughs> and when he said that it was just like the presence of God just overshadowed me and I just broke down I just broke down because it was God that put all this together for the very I mean if that's the only thing we have happened this year it, it's it fulfilled me it was the very presence of God that saved that baby's life and and so God's presence just inspires you it just inspires you it causes you to do things for the kingdom of God and after I got that phone call and I heard that man's voice and those words that I've been wanting to hear for years, we've decided to keep the baby, I was inspired. I was just so excited about what God is doing in that center. I wanted to do more. And, and I know that this is just the beginning, that we're going to see tremendous things happen uh, because of God establishing that center here in St. Genevieve. So, God's presence inspires, inspires us. And, <clears throat> you know, when you're in the presence of God, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit, you know, happens. It, it comes out of you. You know, it, have you ever heard a message on, you know, you have to love somebody? And I've probably preached them. You know, you've got to love somebody, and you've got to love more, and you've got to... Try to love that person. But you can't do that in your own strength. And so when you're in the presence of God and you're soaking up the sun, the, the light of God, and it, the fruit of the Spirit happens, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperaments, faith, all those things flow out of your life because you're in the presence of God and it's the fruit of the Spirit. So... How many know that it's easy to love somebody in church? But you get out there during the week and you're kind of in the flesh and somebody calls you with a problem and you, you're like a gorilla with rabies. But you get in the spirit 
and you're flowing in God and if you stay in the spirit love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness meekness temperaments faith all those things are going to flow out of you because you're in the spirit of God and you're in the light of God and so it inspires you you know Paul the apostle Paul was knocked off of his horse by the light and in Acts 9 3 through 6 and as he journeyed he came near to Damascus and suddenly there shined around about him the light from heaven and he fell to the earth the light knocked him off of his horse and he heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecuteth thou me and he said who art thou Lord you know what I found that was amazing about this passage is is Paul wasn't persecuting Jesus himself he was persecuting the church and Christ said why are you persecuting me so Jesus identifies with the church and he said why are you persecuting me and he said who out art thou Lord and he said I am Jesus whom thou persecuteth it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and he's and he's trembling and astonished said Lord what will you have me to do and the Lord said unto him arise and go into the city and it shall t be told thee what shall you do so the Apostle Paul was knocked off of his horse and brought to salvation by the light of God you know I believe that as more Christians and we need more Christians to get inspired by God and I believe that there, there's so many songs that God wants to put on people's hearts Christians hearts to be written the Bible says that sing unto the Lord a new song you know where did David get all these Psalms that he was writing he got him because he was out there in the wilderness attending sheep and worshiping God and the Lord inspired him and he wrote many Psalms and so I believe that you know even in in this crowd here today God wants to inspire somebody maybe to write a song I got inspired once to write a song it was called don't go courting that lady of sin and uh, <clears throat> that's the only time I wrote a song <laughs> but I believe that there's songs to be written I believe that there's messages that God wants preached today I believe that there's ministries that that need it need to be start and I believe that there's many people out there that need to be saved and it only happens through God's people spending time in the light and letting the Holy Spirit inspire you to move you to start to serve God and 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 watch the glory of God manifested in your life light inspires that's why I like that song keep on the sunny side of life we're to be we're to be like fried eggs with the sunny side up <laughs> got a laugh out of Dwayne so that's good <laughs> praise God does this make sense to you hallelujah the last one I'm going to do today is is G for guide the light guides us when the children of Israel were in the wilderness God guided them Exodus 13 21 and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them in the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night and in Psalms 119 105 everybody ought to know this verse this verse your word is what a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path hallelujah who's got a Bible I, I just have my iPad. You won't get the full effect of this illustration. The word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path.
God's word will guide you and direct you. How many have ever been praying for wisdom and the Lord speak a scripture to you? It's, it's his word. He'll guide you and direct you. And uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I know many of you know this scripture. This was the first scripture I memorized. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what will happen? He will direct your path. Hallelujah. Zechariah's prophecy that uh, Jesus, uh, through the tender mercies of God, would be the day spring from on high to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And so, when people talk about Christmas, you know, and, and you hear all the Christmas stories, and tell them that Jesus is the light of Christmas. You know, I know that they say Coke is the real thing, but it's not. It's, a, it's an artificial light. <laughs> I like that. It's an artificial light. It's not the real thing. It's not the reason for, for Christmas. The, the real light is, is Christ, the Son of God, who came to bring light into darkness. The light of the world. And I, I believe that as we approach this Christmas season, let's do something different. Let's, let's stay in the light. Let God really give you revelation, knowledge of His Son coming into the world. And when you sing those Christmas songs this year, Joy to the World, you're going to get excited in your very inner being because you'll understand the impact of the gospel upon the world and mankind. Hallelujah. Let's pray. You know, maybe you're without the light this morning and you're walking in darkness. God can deliver you out of that darkness and into a very marvelous light. He could change your whole character, your whole nature, your whole being because of what Christ has done for mankind, the light of the world. And with every eye closed, if that's you this morning, I just simply want you to raise your hand and say, you know, I need the light in my life because I'm walking in darkness. Just simply raise your hand. Just say, I need that light. And now I want you to pray a simple prayer with me. And you raise your hand, I want you to pray this with me. Just pray it to yourself. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin and to come into my life and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness and darkness. I open the door to my heart and I accept you into my life in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just pray that as we leave here today and we hear all the Christmas paraphernalia that we're going to be just bombarded with Lord help us to sort through that and help us to see the light of Christmas which is Jesus Christ the Son of God the true sunlight in Jesus name Amen Trey Blue. I'm Kayla McBride. I'm Kyle Bly. I'm Jimmy Brown. We're from Den 2, Pack 410, and Merry Christmas, everybody.